We continue here on Countdown to Kickoff from the University of Tampa with Carolina Panthers running back D'Angelo Williams, Jason Horwitz, Randy Cross. Glad to be with you the last day of Countdown to Kickoff here on CBSSports.com. Uh, to hear D'Angelo's thoughts on the positives about the Cardinals, be sure to check out that segment. But, uh, D'Angelo, let's get into a little bit of the areas where Pittsburgh can take advantage yes. of Arizona, especially against that defense. Where can they look to gain, uh, gain ground and, and gain an advantage? Well, you definitely early on in the game, you have to establish the run, and that's the type of team that the Pittsburgh Steelers are. They, they, they have to establish the run and control their line of scrimmage because, uh, you know, if you look at this Arizona uh, defense, they're a little undersized a little bit compared to the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line. If they can push these guys around and lean on them for four quarters, I don't think that, uh, you know, Arizona's defensive line and their, their front seven, if you will, can, can stand up to the, the test of Pittsburgh. Also, Pittsburgh having theirs because they've been here before. This is not their first rodeo. They know what it takes. They've been involved in big games. They played against defenses of the Baltimore Ravens. They played against the defenses of the Tennessee Titans and Albert Hainsworth. So they're definitely able to, I'm sure they'll be able to push these guys around a little bit. It's just going to be about, uh, you know, whose will is going to be stronger. Is it going to be the Arizona Cardinals defense or is it going to be the, I mean, the uh, Pittsburgh uh, offensive line? How, how do you like the chances of Santonio Holmes and Heath Miller and some of the players on the Pittsburgh Steelers running after the catch, piling up big yards. Does Arizona, is there room in that defense to run around once you get it? This this is what I like about the uh, <laughs> this Super Bowl in particular. Uh, I think these guys are going to take it personal, the, the Steelers wide receivers, because all you've been hearing all week is – uh, Arizona's potent offense and mm -hmm. Pittsburgh Steelers defense and kind of lost in the shuffle as Ben Roethlisberger and, and his particular offense. I mean, they don't understand that these guys are going to be coming out. They're going to come out and they're going to come out gunning. And I know uh, Santonio Holmes, I've, I've had opportunity to see these guys play. And I know that they have the, the offensive weapons and Ben Roethlisberger has the arm to get it and the arms of his playmakers in Heath and in uh, Santonio and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, Linus, Linus Sweet is coming to his own. You got those guys. They're definitely going to be playmakers come Sunday night. And uh, I'm telling you, these are the guys to watch because all week long, I mean, you, you hadn't really heard them say much at all because nobody's really interested in them. They just right. want to talk to the guys from the, uh, the Cardinals offense, that, that potent offense, and they want to talk to the linebackers and the, the D-line, and they want to match those two guys up. But, you know, those are my stars to watch is that, that uh, the Pittsburgh offense. Hey, for, from a Pittsburgh offense, you mentioned his, his name, Lima Swede made a real high-profile glaring error in that AFC Championship game with that drop. I mean, that yeah. was a touchdown waiting to happen. Yeah. And you are he is a young player. He's coming into a Super Bowl atmosphere. What's mm -hmm. he got to do? What's a young player got to do to kind of take a deep breath and adjust in this kind of stage, do you think? Well, he has to take it one play at a time. Uh, he, he, he's, he's, he can't rush the game. He definitely can't rush the game. And as, as young players, I was there once. Uh, I'm kind of still – I'm still there. You're I'm in that young pup category. Right, I'm still yeah, in the young yeah. pup category. Well, you're run, you're running back. You guys yeah, age in dog years, different. so you're yeah. a little bit different. Yeah, a little bit different. But <laughs> being a wide receiver, you have to have a, a, a short mind or a short, uh, you got a short-term memory, kind of like mm -hmm. the cornerbacks. You know, he come back if he come comes back this game and has a big game. Nobody's gonna remember that drop in the AFC mm -hmm. uh, championship game. And he's a, he's a heck of a player. He's been a, a great player since he left college. Uh, that's why the Steelers drafted him. And I think come Sunday, he's not going to have any problems hanging on to the ball because the atmosphere and being in the Super Bowl, everything surrounding this game, it's just one game, you know. So they're going to take it one play at a time, uh, every play at a time, if you will. And uh, I think he's going to come out and he's going he's gonna to produce. You talked about motivation for some of the guys that haven't been talked about so far this week. But once the game actually kicks off, how much does that really play a role for those guys? Well, you know, I think after the first couple plays, everybody's going to be flying around, maybe even the first quarter. Like the adrenaline's going to be pumping, everybody's going to give it, uh, you know, their all. And then after the game settles in, that's when you'll know, you know, who's going to win. I think a quarter and a half, you'll know who's going to win the game based on how uh, everyone's playing. I just, it, it, it kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to say as far as, uh, you know, if, if Arizona even have a chance. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because uh, Pittsburgh's been here before. And, uh, you know, Arizona hasn't. But they've played in big games up until this point. And uh, I'm speaking from terms of uh, 
Pittsburgh having the edge and what can Pittsburgh do mm-hmm. in terms of winning this game and what can they exploit on the the uh, the, uh, the the Arizona Cardinals defense and their their team in particular. But I, I think that you know Pittsburgh, all they have to do is come out and, and uh, you know if they can weather that storm and storm in the uh, the quarter and a half they'll be fine. In in January of 1984. The, Gi- the uh, Raiders played against the Washington Redskins in the Super Bowl here, and the MVP was Marcus Allen. I mean, a running back. Imagine that, a running back actually Man. getting the MVP because it's usually a quarterback. Yeah, we it's, all know it's that. It's always a quarterback. They if get you, everything. If you had to pick a running back in this game to be MVP, who would it be? I would um, – no disrespect to Edge. I love him. He's a great player. But I'm going to I'm gonna have to get out on the Willie Parker only because he's endured a lot. He had the broken leg. He came back. He's, he's been dealing with a, a host of injuries this season. Um, and and that and then I have a couple coaches that that actually uh, that played or coached at Memphis that are on the Steelers uh, on the Steelers staff and Mike the head coach he coached at Memphis and Randy Feaster is the wide receiver coach mm-hmm. so I have a uh, I have some Memphis blood kind of flowing <laughs> over there so I, I gotta I'm a little biased when you say you know who who do I want to get it so I I'd say Willie Parker although you know Edge has had a, a fantastic playoff run and all the stuff surrounding him going into the playoffs will he be here uh, won't he mm-hmm. uh, you know what he's gonna do after the game it, nobody cares what is he gonna do during the game is what we want to know and that's uh, one of those things we're gonna get into the prediction segment check that out as well what's Edge going to do during the game I think you kind of got the idea where he's leaning in terms of who he's going to pick maybe he'll throw a surprise at you countdown to kickoff rolls on here from Tampa